Hello everybody, I'm a Mayo Clinic scientist, DNA consultant, and author. Also have a YouTube channel that's pretty cool, Anthony J. Cast. You should also check out Anthony J. Family Cast, which is a lot of more adventures rather than science, but still fun. Today my house smells like coffee because I've been fresh roasting coffee. I roast the green beans and I send them out as thank you gifts to my podcast guests. I also send them a t-shirt that's pretty cool. But the episode today is with Megan. We had a great conversation. She's from Minnesota. Hope you enjoy it. We talked a lot about keto. Of course, you can have your own DNA analyzed through ajconsultingcompany.com. You can even do it as a podcast episode if you want, or you can have it confidential. Again, ajconsultingcompany.com. Look forward to talking to you if you want to do that. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy the episode. Hi there. How's things? Uh, it's going all right. How about you? Yeah, it's going good. Sorry, I'm one minute late after telling you I'd be exactly on time in my in my uh, letter. <laughs> uh, no worries. Uh, you got the recording device on and everything's good? Um. Yeah, I thought, so we were going to call over Skype. I was gonna planning to record it myself, I guess, or is that not going to work? Well, the problem with Skype I've been finding, especially with the COVID situation, is it's, it's too choppy. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, let me, so, I got you on speaker on my phone, so let me plug the headphones. I have them in my computer, so. Oh, yeah, rock on. Yeah, if you don't mind. All right, can you still hear me then? Oh, yeah. All right. Yeah, do you have, you have headphones on? Yep, we're yep. good now. Perfect. And then you got your PDF available? Yep. Good to go. Awesome. Yeah, you've got really excellent genes. Is Derek around as well? Yep. Yeah, I he's here. here. Oh, that's what I thought. How's it going, Derek? Good, how are you? Good. Uh, yeah, I was just looking through your DNA, uh, and and Derek, remind me how long ago did we talk? Like, it was like a few weeks ago, right? Yeah, Not that long only ago. like two weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I remember. Um, and you're you're both from you're in Wisconsin. Minnesota now. Oh, well, Minnesota. originally from Wisconsin, but now in Minnesota. Yep. yep. Okay. Very good. Which yeah, I mean, I was just uh, you know in South Dakota and just back in Minnesota now. Love it. The weather's finally good. Yeah, yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you're a Vinnie Tordridge fan? I am, yes. Yeah, because I see that you're doing the multi or the pure vitamin club vitamins, Megan. Yep, yeah, that's all, Derek. Yeah. <laughs> right, right, good quality. It's great stuff. In fact, it's funny, Derek, I'm actually going to be talking to Vinny uh, this week on his podcast. All right. Oh, nice. Oh, good. Yep, he oh. just reached out to me randomly today and... You know, it's been a while, and I agreed, and boom, you know. I'll be going. listening to it. <clears throat> so, yeah, let, we'll we'll go through the DNA profile here. It's actually pretty, it's such, you have such good genetics. Usually I, I kind of ignore the plus-minus genes and focus on the plus-pluses. Yeah. I think if we do that, <laughs> we'll probably <laughs> have a super short I know, I was looking today. through this, and I was like, I don't have, like, almost any plus pluses in here, which I guess is a good right. thing. <laughs> that's super good. Yeah, you've got great genetics. So that's that's a huge advantage. I mean, some of the plus minuses are substantial. The very first one is significant. Okay. Um, I mean, I think we can fix it, certainly, but... <clears throat> excuse me, and, uh, you know, I mean, like I said, it's it's pretty impressive overall. And your issues, uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, right? P yep. Loss. Yep. Low iron, that's easy to fix. Vitamin D, easy to fix. But yeah, the polycystic actually, we'll definitely get to that later in the hormone section. Okay. I have some thoughts on that. Um, you're doing keto. How's that coming? It's actually going pretty well, better than I expected. I wasn't quite sure when I first started. <laughs> Cheated <Yeah>. a lot. <laughs> but oh, once yeah. I finally committed, it's actually been pretty good. So. Right. Yeah, keto doesn't work well with cheating. <laughs> no, it no. really does not. you got to go all in or nothing. She had like exactly. a month-long keto flu. <laughs> it was awful. <laughs> yeah, <cheating>. right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, keto flu, brutal. Yeah, in fact, I kind of did keto today. I didn't eat anything all day, and then I had just chicken for dinner. Okay. With a lot of, like, chicken skins and things. I just felt like I've been eating too much, you know, too many carbs. Mm -hmm. Yep. But I took a bunch of electrolytes and, you know, it's not really keto, but one day a keto anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, good. Yeah, keto is phenomenal. I'm giving a talk for the keto conference too. This I think that's this week, but they're recording it now and then they're releasing it on June something, like early June. Okay. Okay. Cool. So you can watch out for that. But anyways, um, the brain optimization section will start there. Okay. Of course, and just go down the line, right, on the PDF and and. Um, the backdrop information, Megan, that's important, is that we have two copies of DNA in every cell in our body. The only cells that don't have two copies are egg and sperm cells. Okay. Uh, yep. So egg and sperm cells, of course, when they fuse together, that's where you get the copy of DNA from your mother and the copy of DNA from your father. Super common question I get is, can you tell which parent gave you the bad version of a gene? <laughs> <laughs> and the answer is no. Right. So if you see like a plus minus, plus being the bad version and minus being the good version. Uh, you can't determine whether your mom gave you the plus or your, bad, or your dad gave you the plus. Right, it's more of an assumption at that point. Yeah, sometimes you can figure it out just based on their health. Mm -hmm. but, you know, and in your case, I would predict there's some Alzheimer's in your family. Yeah, my, uh, my dad's mom is starting to have yeah. uh, memory issues for sure. Yep, yep. And that's kind of the big focus right off the bat with this section. Um, and by the way, plus plus, of course, and again, we've talked through Derek, or Derek and I have talked, so you guys kind of know this, but plus plus means you got a bad version from your mother and a bad version from your father of the gene. Right. Plus minus means you got a bad version from one parent, but then a good version from the other parent. I should just mention that. Yep. <clears throat> and sorry for my gravelly throat today. I don't know why it's so gravelly all of a sudden. <laughs> no worries. But anyways, the, uh, the first gene, plus minus, APOE3 slash 4, APO3 slash 4. So thankfully it's not a plus plus, right? Mm -hmm. But even the plus minus on this one, it's close to a 50% risk of Alzheimer's, of getting Alzheimer's, oh, if okay. you're eating standard American. Gotcha. Right, so that's why it's so predictive, because you have this one and then you've got a couple other risk genes in this whole section. And again, thankfully they're all plus plus, or plus minus. Mm -hmm. But that's pretty substantial risk. This is definitely the biggest risk gene you have. And it's fairly important to fix it and I mean it's extremely important to fix and it's fairly easy to fix in my opinion I mean I think you you need to take DHA it's that simple you have to take a good quality fish oil okay and there's different of course there's different qualities and the most important thing about this gene it's actually a DHA transporter it helps to transport DHA up into your brain okay and the best form of DHA that gets up into your brain, it's called phospholipid DHA or triglyceride DHA. It sounds a little bit technical, but the good news is that link that I emailed you with my website, it has that form on there. Oh, okay. Perfect. Yeah, so it has the good quality version of DHA. Take two grams a day. Okay. And you sh shouldn't have to worry. As long as you're, you know, exercising, regular, eating decent, and you're taking that DHA, you should be fine. Okay. You know? Um, and this is one of those things, right? You want to prevent it way before anything happens. And right, you don't have to totally. Worry about it. Yep, exactly. Because once stuff like that happens, you know, there's no, like, suddenly throwing a bunch of DHA at the problem and fixing it, it seems. Yep. Because they've done those clinical studies. It doesn't seem to work that way. But that's an important one. And then the next one is another twofold increased risk for Alzheimer's if you're eating a standard American diet. Again, the studies are done on average Americans, right? And we know how those, like how we, how average Americans eat and, <laughs> yeah. and, and live. So this one is more APOC1, APOC1 is more of a triglyceride transporter. And um, you definitely want to make sure your triglycerides aren't high. Do you have any sense of your triglycerides? Yeah, I was just going to look back here, see if I have it. I couldn't find, I thought I had lab results on it, but I couldn't find it. I think it's because it's done on like my yearly health exams for my work and not through like my normal uh, health clinic or whatever, so I don't have the sure, records sure. here, but usually yeah, it's, I pretty think it's been standard hot. to check. Yeah, I think it's been pretty pretty good, but I can check good. on that. Yeah, it's worth checking just to make sure, and in the future just track it. By far the best way to bring them down if they are a little bit high is just cardio. Okay. And what's super interesting is that DHA, the fish oil supplement, that also brings triglycerides down, so that's a win-win. Oh, nice. But cardio, if it's really high, that really shoots it down. Okay. Are you doing any kind of training or any cardio? Um, I've started to do more cardio uh, with Derek training for the Ironman. Uh, I've started to go cool. on bike rides with him and stuff like that. So. Yeah, good. Awesome. Ironman, huh? Yeah. Where are you going to do that, Derek? Florida. 
Oh man, that's gonna be hot. <laughs> <laughs> it's in November, so it won't be. It's still gonna be hot. <laughs> be human. Oh yeah. Is that the rainy season? I wonder if that's just on the edge of the rainy season down there. Ooh, I oh, I didn't look at that. that. Yeah. <laughs> when I used to live down there, it that's right on the edge, so it literally rains every day. <laughs> in, at least in September, you know, when college starts and things. Mm-hmm. Um, at least that, that's what I remember. And literally would come in, like these clouds, would, the evaporation would come off the ocean, form clouds, and then blow into shore in Naples around like 3 p.m. every single day, like clockwork almost. Oh. <clears throat> Which part in Florida is it going to be? Um, Panama City. Panama? Yeah. So, the, yeah, at least on the other coast. Cool. Mm-hmm. That's going to be awesome. Are you doing any training in the sauna? No, I haven't started that yet. <laughs> bump into that at some point if you have a sauna. You know? Yeah. I, yeah, with course. the notes on here for me to also, I saw, looked ahead at her and saw the sauna thing. I was like, I feel like Derek's right. going to be talking to me in a sa- into a sauna oh, yeah. in no time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's super fun. I was just hearing about, uh, oh, the big, there's a big wave surfer out in, in Hawaii. And, uh, super extreme guy he goes in the sauna at like 225 degrees oh my gosh just insane i don't think that's even healthy for your lungs and things no way but he literally brings his bike in there and wears and puts on oven mitts and you know trains in the sauna holy (laughs) crap that's another extreme even (laughs) yeah train there oh yeah so you know (laughs) it's one way to get used to that heat yeah it's the humidity that's what kills you down there yep Um, So BDNF is the next gene. Again, cardio is the key with that one. You know, they've done studies with this particular protein, peptide. um, And basically heavy lifting, it doesn't seem to increase that much. It doesn't increase BDNF that much, but endurance or cardio exercise does increase BDNF. And you make less. That's what this, the plus means on this gene. Okay. And so you want to bump up levels because it's really an important factor for brain growth and brain performance, even right now, you know, okay. even even when you're young. But particularly as you age, you know, you want to do a lot of endurance exercise. Everybody, of course, thinks about running and jogging, but it could just be rowing, you know. Okay. It could be anything. It could even be bench pressing with a broomstick. You know, it doesn't have to be running. Okay, just, yeah, more than endurance, gotcha. S- something, yeah, something lo- that takes an hour to do, keeps your heart rate going, cooking along, you can listen to an audio book, something like that. Nose breathing is my favorite, you know, I prefer nose breathing over mouth breathing while you're doing that. Okay. Um, that's how I kind of pace myself and I teach people when, they, when they're learning how to do endurance training is you pace with your nose. So if you have to open your mouth to breathe, you're pushing too hard. And you want to back down just a little bit and nose breathe. Oh, okay. Gotcha. And that way you know you're kind of in the right heart zone for a sustainable hour. And then you can do that really regularly and get a lot of benefits. Okay. You know, anyway. So last gene in this category, finally a plus plus. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And it's called FOXO3, F-O-X-O-3. And this gene indicates your brain doesn't deal optimally with carbs or higher blood sugar in particular. So you probably get a lot of like, fatigue when you have carbs now again you're 29 right yeah i mean you probably don't notice that much as i said this one didn't really notice that much i mean i I definitely have brain fog when i'm tired but not necessarily tied to carbs at at least so far yep doesn't surprise me when i talk to 60 year olds and things (laughs) (laughs) they all just overwhelm overwhelmingly agree that you know this is exactly what happens but at younger ages you can kind of get away with it more your metabolism is faster that sort of thing and that's you know, just part of aging and part of your genetics. Just be careful with carbs. You're already learning how your body responds to keto, how to do keto properly. Yeah. That's a good lever to be able to pull later. You Definitely, know, for as sure. As you notice things like that. And you can always just, you don't have to go full keto. You can always cut back on carbs or use carbs on and off, like in cycles, things like that. You can do a lot of good stuff, but this gene will kind of rear its he- ugly head at some point. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, that's the last one in that kind of brain performance section okay and anxiety do you ever have anxiety i mean is it yeah. an issue uh yeah. it used to be more so I've, I've kind of been more under control for a while like, but uh i've had the issue in the past for sure yeah 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 same i mean certainly the way our whole culture and society is set up it doesn't help you know it's just a stressful world in yeah. ways. Uh, but 
this TPH2 gene, it's called tryptophan hydroxylase. Tryptophan is a, an amino acid, but your body takes tryptophan and makes it into serotonin. Okay. And serotonin, you know, is super important for basically preventing anxiety. You know, if you've got good proper levels of serotonin, you shouldn't have issues with anxiety. The biggest issue though is 90% of your serotonin is made in your gut. Mm -hmm. Okay. Like it's transported up into your brain. So the transporter, which is this gene, is super important to getting it up into your brain. And because you don't transport as much because of the plus plus in this gene, you're at a higher risk for anxiety. Okay. Brain. Yep. So the best way to fix anxiety, in your case, by f I mean, certainly it's the gut, right? Like improving your gut health, which you're doing, eating healthy, exercising, sleeping, all the usual stuff. Yeah. And if none of that works and you still need additional stuff, I have some options there in that paragraph. But to be honest, again, you caught it at a young age, which is awesome. And I think as long as you just eat healthy and exercise, like I say, do all the fundamentals, you should be fine. Okay. <clears throat> um, and then caffeine stays in your body a little bit longer, but nothing crazy there. You're probably pretty good with caffeine. Yeah, I definitely don't. I don't really know. I was talking to Derek. I don't really notice caffeine unless I have like coffee, like soda or right. tea. Don't really affect me, but uh, sure. if I have coffee, usually I feel it, and it, it actually helps me wake up. Oh yeah, perfect. Yeah, so that's kind of middle of the road in terms of that, and there's no lifespan issues. Like I say, just phenomenal genes. You know, I mean that was the toughest section in terms of. You know, some of those Alzheimer's risk genes, and even those ones are plus minus, you know? All right. So that's a relief, and we can switch over to diet unless you have any questions on that. No, I think that's all good. Yeah, awesome. So, <clears throat> so the first gene here, again, plus minus. I normally wouldn't even bother talking about it, but <laughs> like I say, your genes are so good, i got to bring up some of these plus minus. <laughs> it's called GATA3, GATA3. And it's, an, it's about a 20% increased risk of colon cancer if you're eating a bunch of processed meats, like bologna, salami, summer sausage, stuff like that. Okay. That's not steak. That's not hamburgers. You know what I mean? Yep. Um, processed. So th I would probably avoid those. Yeah, I was never a really big fan of summer sausage. I mean, we, n we now make our own, but it's like homemade yeah, venison different. stuff. Right. So, yeah. Right, and I think I even talked to Derek about that. I can't remember mm -hmm. your specific yep. genes, but I, 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 I remember something about that. You're a hunter, Derek? Yep. Awesome. Yeah, we yep. talked about uh, processing our own foods. Yeah, yeah we right. make brats right. and uh, summer sausage and different things like that, so. That's awesome, yeah. Good, yeah, I just, I took the kids fishing yesterday, which is, sounds off topic, but my kids are just so used to processing animals and things like that and picking up fish. It's hilarious because I have a two-year-old and she just walks up and just grabs this fish, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I, we, one time we took our friends with us and they have a two-year-old also. Uh -huh. and, the, and they saw our two-year-old going for the fish and they tried to pick up the fish and it flopped. And they just like broke out screaming and crying. <laughs> 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 my, my daughter was like, what is going on? She thinks it's, she thinks it's like the best thing to pick up a flopping fish. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely a good thing to teach them young. Yeah, you got to It's all about the parents' reaction too, you know. Oh, for sure. Start. But anyway, so yeah, they're, they're pretty callous to that sort of thing, and they never had an issue. You know, it wasn't like I had to break them in with it. It was like, oh, dad's cutting up a deer in the garage. No big deal. You know, it's another deer. Nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally normal. Never freaked them out, which I like. They never watch Bambi. They never watch Disney. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, in terms of the diabetes risk genes, I mean, you're really, really good. Just that, that TCF7L2, because there's two plus minuses there, you know, you have a little bit of less of this hormone called GLP-1. It's called glucagon-like peptide 1. It helps your body, basically your cells pick up sugar, take sugar out of your blood. Okay. So if you have less of that, you're going to pick up less sugar, so your blood sugar might be a little bit higher. And the key with that is you just don't want to eat pure carbs. You know, like on Halloween or something where you just have carbs, <laughs> candy. Yeah, like I used to. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so basically, if you have carbs, you want to make sure at least you get protein and fat with the carbs. Okay. Because that proteins and fats increase that peptide. They increase GLP-1 in your body. So if you're making less, you know, eat more protein fat, bump that level up. It at least helps you manage that. Do you know your blood sugar? Um, It's been pretty good. I think it's like been in the 80, 90. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So. Perfect. 
and even on keto like what's it at now do you check it yeah i think it's been down to like 60 or 70 now yeah yeah wow. it's been pretty good so that's awesome yeah i'm not surprised i mean like I say, your genes are so good. I mean, the only real plus plus, because those are two plus minus genes, the only real plus plus in this whole section is the MC4R gene, mm -hmm. which is super common. I mean, so many people have this gene. I think 90% of people have this gene, and it it's just a, a body weight thermostat gene that kind of regulates your hormones to set your body weight at the proper level. And so a lot of people, for example, they, they gain a bunch of weight, and at some point, just for whatever reason, you know, like say they're stressed or they're not sleeping or like I say, for whatever reason, they gain a bunch of weight and then their body thinks that the 200 pounds is now where they should always be. <laughs> you know mm, I mean? mm -hmm. So no matter how much they cut calories or whatever, their body wants to keep pushing. They wants to slow the metabolism down and just not actually burn the fat. Okay. That's this gene. And what's cool about this gene, sunshine helps regulate this gene. It activates this gene. So getting out in the sun is super important for your metabolism. Uh, intermittent fasting also super important for regulating the proper levels of this gene, um, which I mentioned there, of course. And you probably do that with keto, right? Um, I haven't been so much. I mean... You should try it. You yeah. Try it basically, especially once you're adapted to keto. I wouldn't do it right off the bat with keto. Okay. As if you've never done it, but once you... Once you kind of get going on keto, just skip breakfast and don't eat till noon. Okay. You'll be surprised how easy it is. Hopefully. <laughs> yeah, hopefully. <laughs> and if it's not, you know, cheat a little bit, have some fats, like some MCT oil or s some protein powder or something, you know, collagen powder, mm -hmm. bone, bone broth, I don't know, something. And, and do that for a week and then try it again. You know, it's, okay. usually, it, it, it's usually a really powerful way to regulate your hormones. Okay. And adiponectin, again, that one's a plus minus, also super common. So you got these ones that everybody has, and you didn't really have any rare gene issues that, you know, make it harder for you to deal with carbs, <laughs> <laughs> which is great. So adiponectin, another hormone that your body uses to burn fat, metabolize fat. Okay. And you make less of that hormone as well. So obviously you don't want less of that hormone, right? And the way to increase the levels of this hormone, adiponectin, intermittent fasting. Okay. So that's the argument for that. But again, most people have that. So that's one of the reasons I generally say most people should be intermittent fasting and you're no exception. Um, and then metformin. Did you mention metformin in your Yeah, in your I, I was on metformin for quite a while. I had recently stopped with... The, yeah, you were taking two grams a day, huh? Yeah, I stopped Super with... Super high. Yeah, yeah. yeah, with the PCOS, that's what they put me on to try to help. Ah. Um, and it did mm -hmm. help with that. Um, Interesting. But with yep. going keto, I was having some of the side effects of it. So right. I had kind right. of stopped it to see if I could just get the same effect with going keto. But finding Definitely. that it's not working out, so I'm probably about to go back on it. Yeah, and, and you don't have to go at two grams unless for some reason, you know, you and your doctor work that out, of course. Mm -hmm. But generally, I mean, I do 500 milligrams you know okay and maybe once in a while i'll do i mean i've done two grams because I'm, but i'm just a tinkerer right like i like to tinker with these kind of things mm -hmm. and 500 seems to be like a great amount for me before bed um, and a lot of people do that that's kind of you know just a little bit of a boost mm -hmm. and again most people in my space they use it as a lifespan extension drug not so much as a, a specific tool for diabetes or for pcos or whatever mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, at least you're a plus minus higher responder. You're not like a super high responder to it. Yeah. Right? That's probably I've, why you're getting some of those issues. I, yeah. I've heard some other people too, who like said when they went on metformin, like it helped them lose weight with PCOS and other things, but I didn't really get that response. So it kind of right. lined up with that, not being like a high, high responder. So yeah. And, and, and part of it too, is you deal with carbs so well, maybe not your brain, <laughs> which again, <laughs> you'll notice that down the road, but, yeah. but your body does a pretty good job, thankfully. Okay. And it, you know, keto is still the ultimate way to really burn fat and all this kind of stuff. And again, you'll notice brain performance enhancement really soon, particularly once you get into that intermittent fasting. Yeah. But yeah, that doesn't surprise me that you're not like a super high responder to metformin. Um, but again, two grams is a lot. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking it's about cutting like, back this time around, so. Yeah, it's almost like the amount where you're just trying to get diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, they definitely um, stepped me up to it. They didn't have me like instantly go to two grams. You're like, yeah, don't do that right Oh, away. okay, okay. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, good. Well, then heart disease also really, really good, you know? Um, I mean, of course, the LPL gene is there, plus, plus. And about 50% of people have that plus plus on that gene, so that's another common one. And again, with the triglycerides, right? So you certainly might see some heart disease in your family for people that are super sedentary. Okay. But, you know, you got the pretty good end of the stick here. <laughs> Just keep those triglycerides down. You yeah. Know? And then certainly the gut section lights up. I mean, yeah. honestly, though, it's not that bad. It looks bad, right? Because you have a lot of genes here, but most of them are plus minus um and the two that are plus plus aren't that substantial i mean do you have gut issues yeah this is one area where i've had issues um right. but uh, that was one thing i found interesting was i noticed that in the start of the section there's like the dairy and yep. there's nothing there but um i've right. had issues with like lactose causing ah. like stomach aches um right so yeah some people definitely do and it's it can be triggered, you know, like the genetics are pretty predictive in the sense that if you have bad genes for dairy, you're almost always getting inflammation from dairy. Mm -hmm. But if you have good genes for dairy, sometimes you still have issues with dairy. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not always true. You know, at least if you got the good genes, you can oftentimes reverse it. But if you still, if you try going off and then you go back on, you still have issues, just don't bother with it for sure. Yeah, and I've definitely noticed with the keto and switching over to like, um, the like obviously low sh low sugar low carb or whatever uh, mm -hmm. all those issues have pretty much gone away so I right. I only recently learned that the the lactose piece is tied to the sugar in in dairy and didn't right. realize that before so it's definitely exactly. been interesting yeah so basically look on the label right if it says it has carbs just avoid it if it's a dairy product exactly yep some people if they're super sensitive if it says it has carbs or protein they have to avoid it right because I've, casein is also pretty inflammatory yeah mm -hmm. I've, i i eat or yeah like the whey protein powder all the time so i haven't had issues oh, well. with that so. yeah wow that's hardcore yeah yeah most people can't do that if they have dairy sensitivity as well but again like you said once you're on keto and what's cool about that nod2 gene um like a, you have a couple of plus minuses in the middle of this list that you know, they're quote unquote just plus minuses, but they are pretty substantial for a lot of people. And that NOD2 is one. And so is the ATG 16L1 just under it. Okay. We'll come back to the other ones, but NOD2, speaking of keto, right? Um, that gene is triggered by, or it, it, it creates more inflammasomes, basically. It's kind of complicated. Like, you know, you don't usually go into all this detail, but it's, there's an interaction between this gene and another protein called NLRC4, which triggers inflammasomes. Again, inflammasomes, right? As bad as they sound. <laughs> <laughs> and what's cool about inflammasomes, ketones inhibit inflammasomes. They decrease inflammasomes. Okay. There's a scientist named Dom DeAgostino. Uh, he gets around on a lot of podcasts and things in my circles, and he discovered that. And so, you know just going into ketosis you don't have to supplement ketones right if you just go into ketosis once in a while it really helps your gut okay yeah i've definitely noticed an improvement in like stomach issues since going on keto so yep yep exactly and the atg 1 again another quote-unquote just plus minus gene but it's a higher risk of leaky gut issues in particular with gluten like there's not like a gluten sensitivity gene so much but if there is this is it okay you know, this is really close some people they can still do gluten with this gene but it's more likely that you're sensitive to gluten as well i was wondering hey. that when i was trying to figure out what was causing all my issue, stomach ache issues was whether it was gluten or dairy and it seemed like it was yeah. more dairy but i would still sometimes even that when i had no dairy in a meal have issues so yeah gluten's tricky because uh, you know there's so many other factors with the gluten it's like all the pesticides and all the mold that comes in the grains in america and you know, and then the, just having all those carbs hit your stomach all at once, and sometimes the fiber is pretty tough on your gut lining, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so it can just be a lot of factors. Um, but yeah, I'm a fan of cutting gluten for sure. And if you have issues, by the way, you know that CNR1 gene just below, mm -hmm. plus plus, finally. Yeah. <laughs> um, that's your cannabinoid receptor which basically is the one that binds CBD oil. So if you take CBD oil, if you have an issue, like say you eat a bunch of pizza or something, you feel like crap, 
CBD oil should help. It's not going to completely solve the problem, and it's it's not it's not going to allow you to just cheat and eat whatever you want, but it helps a lot. Okay. So that's you know an interesting thing. It's so funny, like. I did a podcast recently with somebody, and we only did the plus plus genes. <laughs> <laughs> I literally didn't talk about a single plus minus, just so you know. <laughs> um, but speaking of, I want to go back to the top and find and hit that other plus plus. Okay. Which is a CDK gene, and CDK is a form of inflammation. Okay. And the good thing is this gene, it it lowers that form of inflammation. It's kind of like you've got too much hot water, you know. And this gene helps to turn that hot water tap down. Okay. And it turns the faucet down a little bit. But, of course, here's a plus plus, so you're not turning that faucet down as much as you should. Um, and flavonoids in plants, they also inhibit CDK. They shut off that hot water for you. So flavonoids are found in colorful plants like blueberries or, you know, red bell peppers or just literally anything that's colorful. Okay. So you can certainly just try and, you know, consistently get some of that in your diet or you can look for grapeseed proanthocyanidins which are a real great cdk inhibitor um super obnoxious name proanthocyanidins <laughs> yeah <laughs> the g- really good cdk inhibitor um does that all make sense i mean that just helps your gut lining in general yeah should we switch to the next section or did you have questions again i mean it's pretty sparse right yeah no i but think that covered everything so yeah, rock on. So the next section is the vitamin hormone detox section. And with the polycystic, I mean, this is probably the most important section. Yeah. Uh, the first gene I wouldn't worry about unless you have skin issues. And it doesn't sound like you do with your email. <laughs> no, not really. And yeah, if something comes up way down the road, you can always jump on some phytoceramides or something. It's a gene related to ceramide production. Okay. And another thing that nobody ever talks about, ceramides, right? Yeah, but super say. important for like your skin, <laughs> obviously your skin and your nerve cell membranes or your muscle cell membranes. Uh, but usually the skin issues would be a manifestation of other internal issues if you have anything. Okay. And a plus minus, I'm not too worried. Even vitamin D, I'm surprised you were low. You must not have just been supplementing, huh? Yeah, way back I didn't, yeah, didn't used to supplement yeah. or whatever, so then I was always and you're, low. And you're living in Minnesota. Yeah, I think it was more that like... <laughs> that's your I, mistake. <laughs> exactly, that's when I noticed it. I was like, I was like super gloomy one winter. I was like, I should get mm. this checked. And it was like really freaking low. I forget if it's right. on here. Right. But well, and you have seasonal... I just scrolled to the bottom of the page and you have a risk gene for seasonal affective disorder, meaning like depression in the winter. And it's not like a rare thing. Mm-hmm. A lot of people, like if you go to the very last page, right, you'll see the yep. PER3 gene, plus plus. And that's, as, again, it's a risk for basically depression in the winter, even if your vitamin D is low, uh, uh, or high, excuse me. Okay. Even if your vitamin D is good, you still might have that a little bit. Of course, keep your vitamin D optimized, and you are. I mean, I noticed you're taking Vinny's supplement, you know, the vitamin, yep. your vitamin club, and that's awesome. It's in, like, a great olive oil and all that he likes to talk about. Yeah, I, I uh, switched over that one more recently. Yeah, I don't know if you ever heard his podcast. He likes to, like, drink olive oil on his podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Like real loudly, <laughs> he's hilarious. Um, but yeah, I mean that's not that big of an issue. Like a plus minus again, just supplement, get out in the sun. Clearly, sunshine is really important for yep. you. And then the next gene, another super common one. About twenty percent of people have P O N one plus plus, which is a peroxinase gene involved in breaking down oxidized oils and things like the seed oils. Okay. Like literally anything that comes from a seed, I would just avoid it, such as canola oil or, or uh, grapeseed, even grapeseed oil. A lot of people say, oh, I, but grapeseed's good, right? Well, it's a seed, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you know, with this gene, I would be careful with the seed oils. Now, olives are not seeds. They're fruits. Coconuts are fruits. Avocados are fruits. So those are all good. Okay. Butter is certainly not a f- seed. <laughs> <laughs> um, so all that stuff is good. But be cautious with the seed oils. And then the, the, so then, of course, we hit the, the mother load for polycystic because you got a testosterone plus plus gene. But more importantly, the next section with estrogen, there's a few genes, right? Mm-hmm. And I think these are really important. And again, you kind of predicted it correctly when, I, when you said, I, I'm going to try and talk you into getting a sauna. <laughs> <laughs> because I really think you should. 
that CYP, or maybe you said Derek was going to, right? Well, yeah, because I know he had it on his, too. And <laughs> right. uh, once he saw mine, I was like, I feel like he's going to talk us into a sauna. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, at the very top of the next page, CYP1B1, mm -hmm. that gene version that you have, uh, now, it's not super common to have a plus plus, um, but like virtually every single guy I've ever talked to that has gynecomastia, meaning like man boobs, they always have the plus plus on that gene. Now that's mm. not to say you've got man boobs or anything like right. that. It just means the reason for that is your body doesn't clear artificial estrogens as well. Like for example, BPA, you know, in plastics. Yeah. If you drink out of BPA bottles all the time, those estrogens are gonna build up in your body a lot more than anybody else that has a good version of this gene. Okay. Because this is a liver enzyme. Anything that says CYP, that generally means it's a liver enzyme. It's something in your liver that helps you detox, um, helps you break down chemicals. Okay. And in this case, the chemicals are all artificial estrogens, like, like I say, BPA, phthalates from plastics, atrazine. There's a herbicide called atrazine. There's mold estrogens. You know, there's literally estrogen chemicals that mold secretes. So there's a lot of them. Right? Okay, yep. And even birth control, of course, is an estrogen. So that's going to stay in your body longer. So you want to be careful with all that stuff because I, there's a scientist friend of mine. His name is Michael Skinner. He even did a TED Talk if you wanted to check that out. It's, it's called Ancestral Ghosts in the Genome or something like that. It's about epigenetics. But Michael Skinner, Dr. Skinner out in, in Washington University, he studies some of these estrogen chemicals okay. and, and basically polycystic ovary syndrome in mice. Like it triggers, he, he, wasn't, he wasn't setting out to study that, but he discovered as he was researching atrazine and some of these estrogen chemicals, like I said, BPA, he discovered that it triggers that in mice. And so of course he's pursued that a bit, but the, what's interesting, and the reason I bring all that up is because you have this gene, I think this is the most substantial one here. Okay. And they've done studies with saunas, and you literally sweat out more estrogens than you urinate out. Hmm. You know, so they do like these skin patch studies. So they, it's like a nicotine patch without the nicotine. And they have groups of people that don't go in saunas, groups of people that go in saunas. The ones that go in the saunas, they when they come out and they test the chemicals on their skin patches, they're full of BPAs and phthalates and all that other crap. And then their urine has like nothing in it. You know what I mean? So you, you can really accelerate your artificial estrogen clearance. You can help your liver because your liver's not doing as good of a job as it should, is right. my prediction. Okay. You can help it by just hitting the sauna. I would even go for every other day if I was you. Okay. In at least 10 minutes, preferably closer to 20, you know, 15 or 20 at 180 degrees. But 10 minutes is fine too, as long as you're sweating. I just, I generally do it after I work out, so then I'm already kind of warmed up and hot. Mm-hmm. And then you can get away with 10 minutes because you're just sweating like <laughs> like a fiend. But that's a big one. So, you know, the other ones in this section I'm not as concerned with. Okay. But like I mentioned, that testosterone gene, have a plus plus there. That And that one indicates lower testosterone as well. Which is interesting. Uh, so that's something to watch. Yeah. I had a high level of that. Well, I guess oh, compared to the standard good. range, I was at 85. Compared to the, oh, good. the range okay. of 55 being the max. So. That's good. So I'm, I'm no issue with that. What's funny, I oftentimes will say this when I talk about that gene. I see lower T in men all the time with that gene, but not so much in women. So it's harder to predict in women with that gene, and I'm glad to hear that you've already checked it and that you're good. Yeah, at one point I was low, so that's why they rechecked it, and it, it had gone back up. So oh, interesting. It had gotten low from being on birth control, though. Ah, super interesting. Yeah. Yeah, like I say, birth control is particularly risky in your case with that, with yeah. that CYP gene issue. I was on birth control for six years, and it did quite a number. I didn't find out till yeah. way too late. So Yeah, probably some of the anxiety and stuff too, right? Yeah, yeah. And depression oftentimes. I mean, it's hard to quantify depression because nobody ever admits to it. Yep. <laughs> but they've, they've done suicide studies in, in the UK with like 100,000 people like on birth control 100,000 people off off birth control whatever and there's a lot more suicides and that's of course the far extreme you right know? and you, nobody's lying about that you know what I mean like no <laughs> it's pretty it's a pretty graphic way to measure it but I think it's an issue um 
and then the thyroid again plus minuses so they're hard to predict right because sometimes you have that good version of these genes so sometimes they have an issue and sometimes they don't mm -hmm. I mean, how is your energy levels and stuff? It's pretty decent? Pretty decent, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is definitely one I get checked because both my parents are on thyroid medicines now, so kind of preemptively yeah. checking them. Good. But they've been yeah. good so far. Yeah, and you're, again, you're plus minus, so you definitely could trigger some thyroid issues if you're off iodine and stuff. I would keep make sure you get iodine, and you are taking that multivitamin from Pure Vitamin Club, which has iodine, I've checked. Mm -hmm. So you're set there, you know? And, and that one also has the 5-MTHF. It has the good version of folic acid, which I saw you were additionally taking more, right? Yep. Yep, so that's good. Histamines, I'm not the least bit worried about. Beta carotene, that's a pretty minor gene. Cannabis, do you ever do cannabis? Of course, in Minnesota, you probably don't want to admit if you do. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever go to California and do cannabis? <laughs> <laughs> no, I tried it a little bit back in college, so I've, I've done it, but not uh, anything right. recently. Yeah, I mean, you have that gene that gives you more uncomfortable paranoia. <laughs> <laughs> if you get high, so it's, that's something. Yeah. But then the other ones with the low dopamine, you know, it's probably just not as good for you. But if you're if you're not a big cannabis person, nothing to worry about there. Bilirubin, again, plus minus, you know. I doubt you have high bilirubin. But with two plus minuses, it's probably, it's at least worth checking once. Yeah, I mean? the, my last one shows it middle of the range, so. Good, 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 yeah. I'm not surprised. Usually it takes a plus plus to get you up high. You just don't want to have high bilirubin because it can lead to gallstones. Okay. If it's like chronically high. But usually if you just check it once every five years or something, that's more than enough of a metric. Unless you're high, then you want to check it every year. Okay. Good to know. And even the bite, the, like the bees, you know, like the B9 section and stuff, like you don't have any super high need for methylfolate. Hmm. Okay. You know what I mean? So... I mean, are you guys trying to be trying to get pregnant? Is that the story? Yeah, yep. Mm -hmm. So the doctors put me on like the uh, doctor put her, put her on folic acid, which isn't very good. So then I have to switch right. over to a gram of the stuff that you recommend, right? And so, yep. And that's all. And for a lot of people, that's super valuable. For you, it's not that important. Hmm, okay. Ironically enough. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of why I figure is like the, the the fertility doctors. They usually kind of throw you on like just the generic stuff that generally helps people, so they don't. Right. Well, that's because pain. a lot of people do have those MTHFR genes. Okay. To be honest, what's really going to help you is getting that sauna. Okay. Ke keto and sauna. Give it six months of doing that, and boom. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be as fertile as a jackrabbit. <laughs> um, I've seen it. Trust me, I've seen it. One of my coaches from my DNA consulting, her name is Karen. Uh -huh. She had issues for like 15 years getting pregnant. Oh, wow. And she's healthy looking, right? Like she's skinny and whatever, and her husband is as well. And the reason I say looking, right? Like who knows? In reality. Right, yeah, you never know. But they switched to the paleo diet, which is pretty keto. Right. I mean, I've been to their house a lot and they eat really keto and she immediately got pregnant huh. at age 40 and they've got like the healthiest kid and just you know and they're super healthy and they talk about it all the time everybody sometimes i karen's husband joe comes to conferences with me when i speak uh -huh. because he's a better salesperson than i am from the <laughs> book and stuff he loves talking to people about health and it's so funny i just sit back and watch him tell people about how amazing the keto diet is and things because he lives it you know yeah not that I don't live it, but he has this amazing story, and people just relate to it so much. <laughs> That's awesome. So yeah, six months of that, six months of the sauna, trust me, it's, it's pretty powerful. Good to know. Uh, especially with those hormone genes, because I think that's the target. Okay. Um, and, and again, this plus plus for B12, you don't need to supplement B12 because your gut uptake is so great, um, at, at least as long as you're eating meat, you know? Yeah, definitely do. Heavy metals, I'm not too worried about. You've got good genes here. Just that that manganese is super important with that SOD2 gene. Okay. That one helps your mitochondria clear heavy metals. So, you know, your mitochondria, that's like the battery packs inside your cells. Um, so clearly really important for energy and all kinds of other things. Okay. And again, you're super young, so that stuff is probably working awesome. But I just... I generally just recommend getting some pecans and having them around, eating them once in a while. Okay. And rather than going out and buying a manganese supplement because it's, there's so little manganese you actually need, most of the manganese supplements are just cornstarch with a tiny, tiny bit of manganese. Does that make sense? Hmm, okay, good to know. 
Yeah, so, we, I started eating more hazelnuts, hazelnuts. Yeah. recently to oh, get more them. magnesium. Yeah, we, right. we, yeah, and I eat uh, macadamia nuts and hazelnuts for both of us just to get us more manganese because it was... Perfect. Yep. We one noticed it was low. Yep. yep. Good. Yeah, I like that. And then, um, and even the fructose, I'm not that worried about, you know, again, with these plus minuses. And I was just pulling up Derek's DNA as well because Derek had a plus plus on this gene. Oh, okay. Yep. You know, so... So, you know, it helps to cut back on fruit generally anyways. You know, certainly high fructose corn syrup is not good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I can't remember. Yeah, I think in his, he mentioned how he used to make, he got access to high, high fructose corn syrup through his work. And we used to make him yeah. cookies with just high fructose uh, corn syrup instead of sugar. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Still my favorite cookie, I'll, I'll say. Oh, that. it is good, right? Yeah. Like... Or popsicles were awesome with the high fructose corn syrup because right. then you didn't have to worry about the sugar cutting your your lips from when it froze. It oh, was, cool! It was good I like stuff. That. But That's yeah. hilarious. <laughs> Tips for unhealthy Americans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, trust me, my family—I have family members that still use high fructose corn syrup in certain cookies and bars and things. And it's it, it's frustrating, but it's also super tasty. Yep. yep. That's the um, struggle for sure. Yeah, it's it's like fructose literally activates your taste buds differently, you know. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> That's why they engineer it that way. They try and get you addicted. But you know that. I mean, basically it's, you know, our ancestors didn't have access to fruit all the time. So when they did, they had to just go nuts on it. <laughs> yeah. They'd have a field day on the fruit and then, <laughs> then it was the, off the fruit for a long time. Whereas now we've got it everywhere. Yep. So... I mean, that's pretty good section, just like all the other sections. Did you have any questions looking back? I mean, um, the one that I was going to ask in that section, I think, was I didn't see anything under iron, even though that's one area right. I've struggled with over the with years. With low iron. Right? Yeah, low iron. Yeah. Um, eat liver. <laughs> <laughs> you won't struggle with that. <laughs> because, I mean, the, the reason you don't have any gene issues there is all the gene issues relating to iron cause high iron. Oh, interesting. And since you don't have any issues... That sometimes causes low iron because, again, most people tend to creep up, if anything. Okay. And for women, right, because you have a period every month and all this, you're basically donating blood, which is one way to lower your iron. Right. Um, if you don't want to eat liver, and by the way, eating liver, it's it's actually super easy. If you get good quality stuff, grass-fed stuff, and it's and you get the get some bacon and you make liver pate with bacon and rosemary. Oh, okay. Like, just find a recipe that says liver pate. It's spelled P-A-T-E, pate. Okay. And trust me, it's it's phenomenal. You make it in a food processor, and it's like bacon spread. It just tastes like bacon. Sounds pretty good, yeah. I, yeah, my so, kids love it. So I eat liver every day, and I have had her try yes. the liver I make, yep. and she did like it. It didn't oh, taste, good. like, the flavor was okay. It was more the texture I wasn't a huge fan of. It was just like, yeah. Maybe that was yeah, so exactly. this pate might, might improve that, but... I did buy her uh, um, a spleen supplement from Ancestral Oh, yeah, Ancestral. Health. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. To help out with this is a new iron. Because those are the best iron supplement I could find. I did throw out the, mm -hmm. like, hey, would you want <laughs> I found one where I could buy some beef spleen pretty cheap, some grass-fed stuff. I was like, oh, would you be interested? She's like, no. <laughs> I'm not eating spleen. Same here, right? <laughs> okay. I can't imagine it tastes good. Do you Have you tasted it before, Derek? I, I haven't, but yeah, I, either. I find that I'm starting to like everything neat so i'm like you know i i think i'd like it i'm sure i would well, and most people <laughs> the problem with most americans and myself included is we eat we eat we have plenty of food all the time if you starved yourself for like two or three days and then you know like literally just did a water fast or something i'll bet you would love spleen <laughs> <laughs> that's very true <laughs> <laughs> that's probably true of me too but i doubt i would otherwise um yeah i think I think liver is by far the best way to bump up your iron. Okay. It's got all these other vitamins too, and it's just, you know, if, if you make it correctly, it yeah. can fit in, it, like say with pate, with bacon, it fits your keto macros really well, and it tastes really good. I have to try that out for sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah um, cool. Anything else in that section? No, I think that's all. So let's switch to the gym section, and we're speeding right along here, which is fine, which is great. I always like to say, you know, ending early is better because <laughs> that just means you have really good genes. <laughs> so you're a fast twitch for sure. You're more of like a heavy lifter, power lifter, as opposed to an endurance fiber in terms of your muscle fiber type. Yeah, this is a, this is definitely surprised me. Uh, yeah. I always thought I was more of like an endurance kind of a person. Like literally one of the things my dad always said from a young age was like, I was glad I had girls because 
he figured ah. either him or my mom contributed any fast switch muscles. So he's like, well, you're if you're in the right sports and you're a girl, like you're probably uh, able to compete better than if you were a boy. So wow, I definitely didn't expect this one whatsoever. Yeah, you should develop it a little bit. It's harder to develop later. That's probably the thing. I mean, you basically if you do cardio all your development, developmental period, mm -hmm. when you're like a teenager and stuff, then it your body adapts pretty well and you know the slow twitch fibers kind of over they, they they basically take over but yeah at the genetic level you're more fast twitch so i would i would develop it i would do deadlifts and stuff okay particularly because it's good for just your hormones um i mean nothing beats heavy lifting for right. hormones i was just talking to somebody fr from florida a few days ago um literally 20 years old maybe 21 or so and she had just all kinds of hormone issues. <laughs> I mean, she was on progesterone, she was on testosterone, she was on estrogen, she was on all these thyroid hormones, like all oh, hormone wow. replacement. Mm -hmm. And just super, super skinny, you know, um, no muscle mass, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And like muscle mass can really go a long ways to helping your hormones balance themselves and regulate. Okay, good to know. Um, so that would just, you know, just, further promote that and again deadlifting is my favorite that's that's literally my go-to for a first movement pattern my wife does it um, yeah we do the five by five that's what I, when i've better. when Perfect. i've lifted on the um like regularly i've usually done the five by five workout so that's awesome yeah you're right on the ball there. that's my favorite yeah especially when you're first starting i mean the problem with five by five for deadlift is it's too much for your nervous system <laughs> mm -hmm. that's like the one exception i dropped down to one by five Okay. And and pull ups it's the same. Like if you do five by five with pull ups, it's usually too much for your nervous system and then you can't can't keep moving up on the weights. You know, you can't keep progressing in a lot of other categories if you're doing five by five on pull ups. Mm hmm So I would drop it to one by five and try and get heavier. Okay. You know? Not outrageously heavy. Kinda of work slow, you know? Yep. Work up in ten pound increments. Oh, yeah, and then the joints are really, really good, right? You probably don't have any joint issues. I mean, you're 29, so you probably wouldn't anyway. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't have much issues there. Yeah, and that's one I don't think you will. I mean, this one is, a lot of times when I talk to people that are 29, if they have a ton of crappy genes in this section, they say, oh, my joints are fine, you know? And then I say, well, it's waiting until you're 60. <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> but for you, I'm not going to say that because you actually have really good genes here, which is great. That's awesome. And those HLA genes they can be kind of stinkers like they're twofold increased risk for arthritis even when they're plus minus okay but they're triggered by high insulin so if your blood sugar is you know super high then yeah you're going to have issues but again with the plus minus and the fact that your blood sugar is not super high you get great genes okay even in those categories I'm not too worried so then the blood flow is the big focus i guess and as long as you're just moving you know exercising mm -hmm. that's the real trick there's no secret it's just make sure you're not sedentary at work all day long go home watch netflix all evening kind of thing you know like yep get up every hour move around just to get blood flowing in and out of your joints the sauna helps the the infrared light can help okay particularly if you have surgery or something and you're actually bedridden you know that's where the infrared light is just super important but but yeah you know just exercise i'm not too i don't i, don't, I think you're already doing that and then the gout risk you definitely have more gout risk than most people. Okay. And that's like when you get uric acid building up in your joints and then it forms like little glass shards, you know, crystals. Okay. And of course that hurts. And at your age, you're not going to get it, right? But down the road, you, you, you're you at risk for it. So you want to, number one, stay hydrated, which I mentioned with that ABCG2 gene. Okay. Um, but beyond that, I'm not too worried But the, because of the plus minus. But then the SLC2A9, that's a fructose transporter. That's a fourfold higher risk of gout to have a plus plus on that gene, SLC2A9. Fructose is the key. You know, so like if you go to the doctor, a lot of people, they have gout and they go to the doctor and you know what the doctor tells them? Mm -hmm. They'll say, stop eating meat. Hmm. You know, which is hilarious because it has nothing to do with fructose. But in reality, most people have this gene. <laughs> Oh, you know interesting. I mean? And what they have to do is stop e eating fruits and high fructose corn syrup and mostly soda. You know, they're drinking soda every day and they stop eating meat like as if that's going to solve problems. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. 
And Peter Atia, he did, Dr. Peter Atia did a really interesting podcast on this topic about fructose and uric acid. It's, it was with an interview, it was an interview with a guy named Rick Johnson. Okay. Super interesting. I rarely like recommend podcasts, particularly on a DNA consult, but this one is so interesting. It's worth noting for that gene. And then the blood pressure, and again, you know, soda is the big killer. It doesn't mean you can't ever have fruit because you're, you're not that bad with fructose. Mm-hmm. You know, but do be cautious of the fructose. Blood pressure, you have a reduced risk of high blood pressure from salt, which is beneficial. Mm-hmm. And then you kind of have an offsetting gene called angiotensinogen, AGT is the abbreviation, and that one is pretty common, but it usually leads to higher blood pressure. If you have like body weight issues and you're not exercising and you have a lot of chronic inflammation, things like that. So you're, pro- you're probably pretty good on your blood pressure, but... Yeah, I've always had great blood pressure. <laughs> right. Yeah, just keep exercising and, and keep, you know, keep your body weight in check and you'll be fine, I think. Okay. Um, and certainly don't think salt is the big magic trick if it does get high. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's another one the doctors are going to misguide you on in this regard because they're not looking at your genes, right? Right. So then the bone strength, you know, it's funny, the salt, the blood pressure you had come kind of yin-yang, right? You had a gene that's protective against high blood pressure with the salt, and then you have a gene that's caught, that triggers high blood pressure in some people. Now with the bone strength, you have the similar kind of yin-yang. You've got a, a, a Wnt16 gene that leads to weaker bones, but then you have an FAM3C gene that leads, leads to increased bone density, so they're totally offsetting, in my opinion. Hmm, interesting. I'm not worried about it. Okay. Know? And that's exactly why I have good genes that I list on here, because sometimes they offset the bad ones. You know, because generally I'm not interested in good genes. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I just want to find the bad ones and then figure out how to fix them. And speaking of bad, I mean, the next one, IGF-1, uh, the IGF-1 receptor, it, it makes it harder to put on muscle mass for some, for a lot of guys, but for you, I'm a, you know, you're probably not, a, that's probably not one of your main goals in life, right? <laughs> no, it hasn't been. <laughs> <laughs> Every once in a while it is. I definitely talk to women bodybuilders, but in your case, I'm not, not focused on that gene. And then finally, you're low, you have a low pain sensitivity, meaning like you feel less pain because of that COMT gene, it's not like a super low sensitivity. There's other genes that are more rare that trigger a lot lower sensitivity, but okay. basically you gotta be cautious with pain because you don't feel it like the average person and then that gives you an increased risk for injury. Hmm. You know, so you don't feel a knee injury coming on and then boom, you blow out your knee. Interesting, right? okay. Um, so just be aware of that if you if you have pain don't try and push through it so much like a lot of people tell you to do like pain is no pain no gain kind of stuff mm-hmm. um, just pay attention to it really be careful with it okay um, any questions in the gym section another really good section frankly. um i don't think so well let's mm-hmm. jump to the last section sleep and again the only plus plus here <laughs> <laughs> uh, is the seasonal affective gene, which right. we mentioned before. Yep. I mean, to be honest, that gene too, nothing beats the sunshine. I've talked to a lot of people about this gene. And yeah, you can get these blue lights and try and modify how much light you're getting and things, but literally nothing beats the actual sunshine. You can get a UV lamp and that looks pretty good, but that's it's like $500 lamp, you know? Yeah. And you gotta be super careful with it because it can fry your eyeballs out. Oh, fun. You know, <laughs> I have one, so I know. Not that I've fried my eyes out there. I wear goggles, and I only use it for three minutes a day okay. in the winter. But Florida is the best, right? Just go to Florida in the winter. Yeah. Um, go out, do an Ironman. You know? yeah, yep, there, there you go. <laughs> like everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> but then the clock gene, ABCC9, I mean, if you have sleep issues, those would be the genes that would trigger that. Because okay. they they're plus minus and they do sometimes cause delayed sleep cycles and things. Um, do you have any sleep issues? I mean, it wasn't on your email. I mean, I don't know if it's sleep issues. I definitely am a, like, I was kind of surprised that the stays up later didn't have anything there because I'm definitely a yeah. night you feel owl. feel like a night owl? Yeah, right. for sure. Were your parents night owls? Um, sort of, yeah. They definitely probably stay up later than they get up early for sure. Yeah. Yeah, because sometimes it's just an environmental thing. It's not always genetic, you know? Okay. And that's good because that generally means you can manipulate it more. Okay. You know, of course, it's hard because 
if you develop a habit as a child of just you know sleeping in more and then yeah you know, i was the kid who slept in until like noon 2 p.m <laughs> like <laughs> right exactly yeah it's harder to change but at least it's not ingrained in your dna you know, yeah it can that's good to see then okay because usually if it's in the dna i tell people like you really want to try and figure out ways to s sleep in you know like stay up later and sleep in because and, and and vice versa like if you have those early riser genes it's the same like i'll tell you you really want to find ways to get up early and s go to sleep early because you're going to have a healthier metabolism and a lot of other things will be healthier your blood sugar will be down more generally yeah kind of um, like play into your genes if you got them right yeah gotcha. it's, it's generally pretty predictive but again for you it's not such a concern and you could tinker with some of the supplements here and I know you're already doing magnesium, and that's probably the most important one with those genes you have. Okay. And you're a little bit more blue light sensitive, but to be honest, again, plus minus, you got the paragraphs there if you need them. You don't have any issues, so. Okay. I mean, pretty overall, pretty phenomenal genetics. I mean, did you have any questions looking back? Um, I don't think so. The one, the one random thing I was going to ask, I don't know if there's anything tied to this DNA-wise. I didn't see anything in here, but it's like, is there anything that makes you bruise easier? Is there a... Bruise easier? Yeah. I mean, yeah, but, like, maybe sometimes vitamin K and stuff, but certainly women in general bruise easier than men. Okay. Again, it's not 100% of the time, but in general it's true. So it probably is more estrogen-related, but I, I'm not totally sure. And okay. I, I know you said you're taking aspirin, which could definitely trigger that too. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I didn't think about that because it, it, yeah. It's like low dose aspirin for your PCOS, I assume. Yep. Yeah, and for right. yeah, trying to get pregnant. So. Yeah, I would just cut. I would just cut that. Okay. Um, again, hit that sauna. You know, the thing about aspirin is it inhibits platelets, and that's like a night. I think they have like a 90 day half life. So if you take too much it literally can take you a month and a half, two months, three months, you know, just to reverse the, all the platelets that are shut off. You know, for blood clotting and stuff, or bruising. Okay. And then especially if you're doing some other flavonoids, you know, like I know just in your vitamin C supplement, it's got some bioflavonoids and some other stuff. Sometimes those further thin your blood, and that can trigger more bruising. Okay. So that's probably the tri trick is to cut the aspirin. But again, Lift heavy, hit the sauna, balance the hormones as well. That's never, even if it doesn't completely solve that issue, it helps no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> it just helps in general. Yeah, I was just curious because yeah. I've been noticing a lot more bruises than late, uh, lately, so I was trying to figure out what's right. cut, if there's anything in the DNA. It's almost certainly it. those. It's aspirin. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. It's not DNA. But yeah, and, and sometimes people have genetic issues with aspirin and things like that. And to be honest, I don't even check those genes. So you might. You know, okay. Um, because I avoid like the prescription drug genes, except metformin, because I consider that a plant supplement. Okay. You know, metformin comes from the French lilac plant, so it's kind of annoying to me that they make it a prescription. Oh, interesting. I prefer that. Like, I wish it was over the counter, like it is in some countries. Huh. But with you know all the other prescription drugs, the man made because there's thousands of prescription drugs. You know, I can't keep up on top of all of them. Right. There's a lot. There's a lot of info you can get with genetics, and again, I don't do that screen. I can if people, like certainly if people are really interested, I can do like a custom DNA screen just for their prescription drug, you know, their ability to handle certain prescription drugs. But I, I don't often do that. Okay. You know, I have, I have in the past more for favors and for people and things. Um, but I don't have time these days for favors. Right. <laughs> I'm not saying I wouldn't do it for you. I'm just saying I wouldn't do it for free anymore. Yeah. yeah. But. It's going to be that. I'm sure you just cut the aspirin, you know, okay. irrespective of the genes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, enough. anything else? Anything with you, Derek? How's life? It's good. I got... Any, anything? Yeah, any updates on your stuff? Uh, I, I got all the supplements that really we talked through, and I started taking a lot of that. Um, nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys both had that seasonal effective gene too, which is funny. So Florida's really come out <laughs> for you guys in the winter. <laughs> yeah, well, usually we go. Well, I guess it was October, but yeah, usually we go on like a Caribbean trip in the in October. But yeah, apparently it helps. I cut it a little bit later in the winter. Probably would be better. Yeah. Yeah, do it in like February. Yeah. You know? <laughs> That's usually when it's like getting sick of winter around here. Exactly. Yeah, I got the hair metal test. Um, oh, I cool. Had, I haven't taken yeah. it yet because I was waiting for. 
I was trying to give, I don't know how much time I need, but I was like, oh, maybe I should give it a little time with all the new supplements to see how that right. new level would be. Exactly. Right, so right. I have it, I just haven't actually done it yet. But Yeah, it's a good call. Yeah. No, I like it, man. And I mean, you, def you definitely have more issues in terms of heavy metals than Megan had, of course, because nobody has less I, issues than Megan. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody I, I, has more issues than I, she does. Yeah, I was like, I, as I was going through, because earlier today we were comparing it, and I'm just like, I have so many more than you. Like, holy crap. <laughs> yeah, that's a good thing. Or a even good when thing. we did have like the same one, my, his, mine, mine was like plus minus, and his was plus plus. Yep. So. Exactly. <laughs> right on. Yeah, that's... It's a good thing, man. I would count your blessings on that, Megan. Yeah, for sure. Oh. Well, good. Did you guys have any other questions or interesting you know, issues or comments or whatever? Nothing I can think of. No, not gone. Oh, right. Well, good. Thanks Thanks again. I appreciate it, especially you guys doing the podcast version and hanging out together. It made it a lot of fun. And yeah, no, this is good. Yeah. Um, and hopefully I'll, I'll send you guys a gift package, you know, as soon as I get that recording device. I've actually been... Uh, home roasting coffee for people oh nice cool. you know as like a gift and then i shoot you a t-shirt as well cool it's nice. like yeah it's got like a little dna with dr j on the front and on the back it's got the number 23 like a jersey kind of <laughs> <laughs> because because 23 that's how many you know we have chrome we have 23 chromosome pairs so it kind of means something for dna right that's why the company 23 and me is called 23 and me yep <laughs> yep <laughs> But uh, I'm I'm still crossing my fingers that the coffee is actually getting to people intact and not just like <laughs> breaking open, and just spewing all over in the bag. That I'm packaging. Anyways, awesome guys. Have a good evening. Yeah, all you right, too. Thanks. thanks. All right, bye. bye. Yeah, bye.